We've got Tencent uh, reporting imminently could post its first revenue decline on record. But for longer term investors, if you cut out all this noise, is there a valuation opportunity in uh, China tech? Well, there absolutely is. Um, I mean, longer term, obviously, there are some amazing companies, um, you know, that are doing uh, incredible things in terms of uh, reaching vast parts of the population that have been underserved. Uh, I think China Tech also is still climbing the value chain. There are some, some really strong companies in the semiconductor space, uh, which are what we call localization plays or localization um, you know, companies that are essentially replacing uh, foreign companies that have so far uh, dominated uh, the supply, whether it is in the industrial space or even in the healthcare space. So, you know, tech in China expands a whole gamut of things, you know, from industrial, obviously to high end technology, but also in parts of consumer and healthcare. So, technology, I think, is pervasive, and there are some really strong companies that are very rapidly climbing that uh, that food chain, if you will, and replacing particularly some of the U.S. and European companies that have so far enjoyed dominant market shares in China. Anik, uh, India and Indonesia, they seem to be uh, back in favour in a post-COVID uh, environment. Do you think that this is a very different paradigm uh, compared to 2013, especially when you consider uh, a dollar may move uh, higher and uh, there's still a lot of wood to chop in terms of the tightening bias in, uh, in the United States. How are you approaching those two markets? It is a different paradigm and I think you put your finger um, on the pulse uh, very carefully. Um, I think the issue here is that, um, you know, the Indian economy is um, much less sensitive to moves in particularly the oil price, uh, unlike, I think, what the market consensus view was. Uh, CPI is essentially not as sensitive, uh, or inflation broadly is not as sensitive to, to input costs, largely because of subsidies, largely because of some of the protections there are in the system. So, you know, we've seen very clearly that, you know, CPI has been trending down, uh, particularly in India. But also, I think more broadly, um, you know, the Indian economy is benefiting from, uh, you know, very strong foreign direct investment. Um, you have most of the multinational companies now thinking uh, about making India a critical pillar in their supply chain or critical link in their supply chains. So I think over the next several years, we'll see a lot of FDI come into India. Um, but more broadly, I think the Indian economy uh, is actually in a very good shape and bounding back strongly after COVID. You see that in the bank lending data. Uh, you see that in the bank credit quality. But also more broadly, I think India is making some very strong moves, uh, particularly in terms of the consumer sectors and companies kind of moving into the organized space uh, and really kind of catering towards the mass affluence, which is beginning to develop uh, in India.